Howdy out there, this is the CNC Dude, going to talk about some G-Code programming, everybody's favorite. This is the newer edition of the Haas uh, Mill Series Programming G-Code Workbook, and Haas is always based their uh, systems on a FNUC or a FANUC style programming system, pretty much almost a duplicate. So you're not limited to just Haas CNC machines. All you Finuc people can definitely use this book. All right. If one of the first exercises we hand out, we hand out the book, or you can just do the sheet. It's something called a coordinate display exercise, or positioning exercise right here. So X and Y targets in the middle, and you got to, like, Tell us where the grid marks are from 1 through 8. And back here is a little description of uh, a machine and X and Y and Z coordinates. And if you were standing at the machine as an operator, what your view of the machine is and if we're looking at you from the ceiling, which would be like the Z-axis point of view. Now would be on a vertical machining center. That's kind of our how we, how we look at all this. And a little discussion on machine home positions. Machine has to know where it is. And the your first two G codes in here, which are G90 absolute positioning, which means there's only one zero. And G91 incremental, which means every new place you show up at is a new zero, a new day. Uh, we use this a lot in uh, the old hand programming days. Not so much anymore, but I think you still need to know how to think incrementally in handy. So the positioning exercise starts off with eight points of, an, of a G90 style program and the next one is incremental which would be how do you get from point eight to point nine and you disregard your zero so it's just the total movements from eight to nine. That That's incremental. And we have some discussions here on Samples of programs, what they all do, the first couple of lines of a program, which Mark Terry Berry has a good video on that. Uh, the, the common G codes, or preparatory G codes, they're called, and a big list of them. And some of these I've never even used. It's probably more than, than the, it's on this list. And something called machine defaults. When you start the machine up or hit reset, it goes into a default condition, meaning that it's running some kind of G-code. It's always like switching G-codes. And then we have another one called M-codes, which are miscellaneous codes, which would be like turn the spindle on, change a tool, turn the coolant on, stuff like that. Miscellaneous codes. And then there's a bigger list here, like turn on the chip auger automatically. Things like that. And a little discussion on program structures. Some good reading in there. And what all these, what's an A mean, a B, a C, a D, E, F, G, H, and G. Also, obviously, G. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. So that we cover all the, the alphabet there. And the first G code, G00, Rapid Positioning Command. So in our assignment here, we had, uh, watch this video. Watch this video. He talks about uh, the G codes, G0, G1, G2, and G3. Got all these fancy books here, roadmaps. So we're back to this... Uh, what a G0 is, which is like, get there as fast as you can. And then after that, it's go in a line, but you got to control how fast or slow you go, which are going to be cutting moves. G, G1 or G01 is a linear cutting move. And then you either do in lines or circles. You know. So circular clockwise, which would be righty-tighty, and counterclockwise would be lefty loosey. And there's a little sample right there. That's pretty much how the machine operates, those four codes. And that's actually the same way a 3D printer operates. Same thing. Other than that, everything else it's doing uh, 
is miscellaneous codes and a combination of, of these four codes. Pretty actually simpler than you think. So there's a little, little discussion here, some reading, if you want to do some reading, or watch some of the videos. And this first exercise that we actually write a program, we fill in the blanks, called the interpolation exercise, because that's what we're doing. We're interpolating. We're going from place to place. And you fill in the blanks, and we, if you have a machine or a simulator, you plug this in the machine, watch the graphics, see if it works. Or if you go online, you can use something called NC Viewer, like this one here. I actually wrote the program and ran it in here. So if I ran this, it runs the program. I'm going to go back to the beginning and run the program. That's that same program. All right, so back to this exercise. This is actually kind of challenging up front, but uh, my tr tips and tricks are is learn to do the positioning. Just get a pencil and just start writing where every X and Y coordinate is. Sometimes they used to teach it of where the tool is, but actually a probably even simpler one is lay out the coordinates of the part. So he says right here, X, 0, Y, 0, part origin. And up here, it's a little bit of blueprint reading, so that's a little practice for that. It says four inches this way and four inches that way. But we have some curves up here. We have a curve up here and it says radius 0.500 typical, two places. So in blueprint reading land, it's like I don't need to write down two of them. It's just going to be the other one that looks just like it. So that would be the lower right corner. And over here, this radius is 0.500, but it's actually a inside radius, not an outside radius. So... If, if we want to cut this, we, we, we want to do like go up this way, follow this path, go all the way around, go inside a little curve, come back to the beginning. In G-code language, this would be G1, make a line, G2, make a curve, G1, make a line, G2, make a curve, G1, make a line, G1, make a little tiny line, G3, go the opposite curvy direction. And then G1, a little line, and then G1 back to here again. We just need coordinates. So now if you did the layout of the part, you can start adding in where the tool is. Now it says right here, half inch diameter end mill. If you're not good on your fractions, just do a decimal equivalent, and the decimal equivalent is right over here to the right. It says the cut of diameter will be 0.500 diameter. So we need to know the radius, which is half of the diameter. And on this upper right left one, I actually did a little helper right here. That coordinate would be x minus 0.25 and y positive 0.25. That would be our start point. And we don't have to worry about filling out the bottom yet. I'm not going to worry about it down here. Then we just figure out where all these other coordinates are. So I wrote up here that this coordinate, if I use my math, was 4 inches minus the radius, that makes that x3.5. So the part and the tool would be in the same x-coordinate line, straight up and down. The y-coordinate would be the same as the left here. So this coordinate would be x positive 3.5 and y positive 0.25. Then we get over to here, we're going to add 4 inches plus the radius, Oh, I'm sorry. That's backwards. Four inches, that's not adding the radius. But we're going to add the radius of the tool. That's 0.25, so that makes that x 4.25. Now, the y coordinate is actually, if I follow the length of the radius, this line right here, that would be negative 0.5. That would be that one. So the rest of it is just fill out the little blanks. And if you have a little uh, graphics machine like this one, you can test the program out. Actually, I wrote it all up here. I even put these little percent signs. But I actually used something called Notepad. I actually wrote it on this. It's easier to type on this than this sometimes. And I loaded it in my virtual machine right here. And I tested it out. So up here is my program. And I'm going to go to the beginning. I named it Pokey, my favorite student. And my digital readout coordinates are right here. So if I can run it fast... Back to the beginning, I can run one line at a time. So 
right here. It's beginning a program. That's a program number, so it doesn't really do anything. Next one is going to be tool change. We can't simulate that on this NC viewer. And it would be positioning move. That's a turn on the spindle move. And that's a turn on the height offset move. And do the coolant while we're at it. And we're going to go to Z minus 0.625. That's when we're going to be cutting at this that level, which would be below Z0. And this is called a isometric view up here. So if I tilt it this way, that's a little bit tilted. That's top view right there. So I can even follow it this way. Let me zoom up a little bit. So our tool is at the stat position and our zero, zero is right there. Then we're gonna to go to the right. Oops, I went too fast again. Go back to the beginning. All right, it says zero, zero there. I'm gonna go one line at a time. It moves to the first position. Then I go down and it goes to X 3.5. Even says here on the digital readout. Around the corner, around the corner, that's G02. Then we're gonna make a line, then we're gonna make an arc, I'm gonna make a line, then I'm gonna make a little tiny line, and a little tiny arc, and a little tiny line, and go all the way back up here to where we ended. And the ending lines are just to pull the tool out of the way. So we went back to this position, it would be go up a little bit and then go home and end the program. So to look at it from the, um, this point of view here from the beginning, I'll just put it right here in the beginning and I'll do the same thing. We call it a single block when you're at the machine. It goes to there, goes to there, 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 there. Up, curvy, over here, done. So back to our G-code exercise. We're just filling in the blanks. And you notice on this one, it says G01 right up here on this line. And the one below it does not say anything because in the machine language world, it's it's called G1 is a modal command, which means it's in the G1 mode. So you don't have to repeat it. It's just going to do a G1 move, any X, Y, or Z you put in there. So it's going to be an X movement only from the stop position to there. And we also don't need to state the why because it didn't change so for me it's less typing so all right and the next one would be it says r right there and you notice right there it's a, it's a curve it's a circular move so that's going to be a g0 look in your book g02 okay and the next x and y position but how do we state how big a curve it is that's what the R value is for. And there's an optional one called INJ. I won't get into that right now. R is much easier. So, so the radius would be the radius. It's really kind of the distance, the total distance from the center of the arc. And you have to add in the radius of the tool. So it's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25 for the radius of the tool, making the R 0.75 right there. And we go through this, and it goes to G1, goes to G2, goes to G1, stays as G1, and there's another arc here, and this is the little tight one in here. So that would be a G03 move counterclockwise. And that R is actually a smaller number because the arc is, it, the tool is swinging a much smaller arc. Over here, we're swinging a real big arc. And down here, we got a little teeny weeny arc. That's pretty much the nuts and bolts of uh, G-Code. And you can watch Mark's video up here. I talk about where where am I going, position. You know, these are all helpful. This is another plotting exercise. This is actually the graphics uh, screen on the Haas control, which is how we do it in school. And I also added in my own video here where I use Mastercam to demonstrate uh, what the coordinates are. So I can also show where the tool goes. So you can watch all that, and then you fill in your workbook and then just turn that in or just keep on learning. Okay, this is CNC Dude signing off, and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.